Welcome to the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, episode number 120. No one can stop you from doing exactly what you want to do. If you can accept that the Calvary won't come, and if you can be the Calvary, it gives you a chance to be happy. Mark Duplass. Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, my indie film hustlers, to another episode of the Indie Film Hustle Podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Now, today's show is sponsored by Videoblocks. Now, Videoblocks is a subscription-based stock media company that gives you unlimited access to premium stock footage everyone could afford. If you're looking for like extra exterior shots or things that you might want to incorporate into any of your projects, whether it be a narrative, documentary, music videos, commercials, these guys got you covered. They've got unlimited daily downloads from a library of over 115,000 HD video clips, as well as a huge selection of After Effects templates for like opening credits, uh, motion graphics titles, company logos, as well as motion backgrounds as well. It's pretty amazing. And that on average, uh, subscribers pay less than a dollar per download in a course of a year. And the content does not get stale. They're constantly adding new content to the library every month. So it keeps it keeps it very, very fresh and you always have something new to look forward to. And everything you download is 100% royalty free. Even if your subscription is canceled, you have unrestricted usage rights for anything you want to do, including personal projects and commercial projects. And you keep whatever you download and maintain the usage rights forever. Now, Video Blocks is offering the tribe a yearly subscription for 99 bucks. That's 50 bucks off the usual price tag just for you guys, just for the tribe. That's less than 10 bucks a month. So to get this deal, just head over to videoblocks.com slash hustle. That's videoblocks, V-I-D-E-O blocks.com forward slash hustle hustle for this exclusive offer. And don't forget to go to freefilmbook.com. That's freefilmbook.com to download your free filmmaking audiobooks from Audible. So guys, today's show is all about giving you freedom to make your feature film. And, uh, I, I, you know, I, it, this is one of the most freeing experiences uh, that I ever had while I was making This Is Meg, is, is being able to move so quickly through the creative process from, from idea to scriptment, to uh, to shooting it, editing it, finalizing it, and we did it all within, I think, about four months. Uh, literally from the idea all the way to the final edit and color and, and export, and it was such a freeing, amazing experience that I wanted to share with you guys what exactly it was, and hopefully you guys can do something similar for your first few films. Uh, now, what is a scriptment? Scriptman is basically a full script minus all of the dialogue. It allows, it, it takes away a lot of the exterior, the interior kind of slug lines and reads like a very cool short story. Now, I'm not the first to think about scriptments by any stretch. Uh, Mark Duplass has been doing it um, basically his entire career as well. I mean, someone like James Cameron and Quentin Tarantino, they love writing scriptments prior to writing their screenplays. But what Mark does is he actually writes the scriptment, and that is what he uses to make his movies. So what he likes to do, and 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 I'll tell you from from what I heard about what Mark does, and to also what I did, was you reverse engineer your story based around things you have around you. Robert Rodriguez did this. So did uh, Kevin Smith. These guys. This is not a new concept. I think it needs to be. A lot of people need to remind be reminded of what this could. What this very powerful um, thing is for, especially for first time filmmakers, for people just, you know, just starting out, um, people who just want to make a feature film and, uh, and, and, and not get caught up in the, the drama, if you will, of writing a screenplay uh, at, at the very beginning of their career. You know, I've written screenplays before. They're very taxing. <laughs> um, they're very, uh, they're rough. You know, as any writer will tell you, they're, they're rough. They're, they can be extremely rough to deal with. Uh, but I didn't want the writing and the formatting and all this kind of stuff to kind of get in my way of telling the story that I wanted to tell with Jill on This Is Meg. So we decided, hey, let's just do this kind of like uh, the League, the, the FX show The League did or Reno 911 or Curb Your Enthusiasm. All these guys have very loose scripts. So they would just start with 
an idea and and structure it out very well. And that's the, that's the misnomer. That's a kind of myth about scriptments or about these non-scripted um, feature films or television shows is they are scripted, but they're just scripted in a different format than you're normally used to. So let's say that you were going to do, uh, you know, like, I'll, again, I'll use Meg as an example. What I did was I took, uh, I ta- me and Jill sat down and we were like, okay, what do we have access to? Okay, we have my office, my back office, your house, uh, this other house, this other house, this other location. And uh, we'll, you know, we'll go up to the Hollywood sign and do a location shot there and we'll grab some stuff on the street and they're like, okay, boom, boom, boom. And once we knew all of our locations and all the things we had access to, we started writing around that idea and started you know, building everything around what resources we had at our disposal. And by doing that, we were able to construct a, a screenplay or a scriptment fairly quickly. Jill uh, did a lot of heavy lifting and uh, came up with the story. Uh, I, I gave her my notes and like, hey, no, you know what? We have this location. Let's try to change it over here. And you know, gave her some guidance in regards to the production. Uh, aspects of things of what we had access to but you know she came up with this scriptment that was at the end almost like 45 pages so it wasn't like you know we just threw a, a three or four page outline together and ran it was it, it was a pretty detailed uh, uh, scriptment and there were scenes that were fully scripted out and there were other scenes that were very loosely screen uh, scripted out you know so uh, once the movie gets released I can talk a little bit more about uh, specific scenes in the movie and you guys, uh, and inside the um, inside the indie film syndicate, I'm going to be going over this in detail in the coming weeks and months uh, on, on how exactly we did this. So by doing this, guys, uh, we were able to get this movie done so so quickly. And you know, a, a lot of people who work with Mark Duplass, you know, especially screenwriters, they just get are, are in awe of how quickly they're able to put stuff together. Like he'll come up with an idea, and six months later, they're done. Like literally done six months later because he keeps the budgets very low. And that's the other thing, too. You keep the budgets very low. You use what you've got. It's a collaborative art. You need a lot of help from a lot of different people to make something like this happen. But it's extremely doable. And you write around what you have. And it's not that difficult to do, honestly. Uh, you have to use proper structure. You have to get um, y- your storyline and everything organized properly have your <clears throat> your points, your hero's journey or whatever kind of story you want to tell. If it's a three-act story, if it's a four-act or six-act story or a two-act story, um, you can do so, but just organize it out. And then when you get on the set, this is what happens. When you get on the set, you've already hopefully talked with your actors uh, prior to getting on the set. When you do that, when you get on the set, you could start riffing. And you go, okay, guys, this is what this scene's really about. We need to, get, we need to hit this point this plot point, this plot point, and this plot point. And we have to hit these marks. Uh, how you get to those marks is completely up to you. But we need to hit these marks in order for the story to continue to move forward. And when you allow actors to really feel free to do so, the magic that comes out is pretty remarkable. Now, again, you have to hire the right actors who are really kind of versed in improv and are comfortable doing this. But you'll be surprised at a lot of actors who are able to do this. And also, you know, when you're casting actors, uh, this is on a side note, when you're casting actors, try to cast people who are very close to the role that they're going to play. So that there is not, it's not a complete stretch for them to do. I mean, look, Daniel Day-Lewis is Daniel Day-Lewis. Robert De Niro is Robert De Niro. And, you know, all these guys, you know, Meryl Streep is Meryl Streep. But generally speaking, if you as a director or as a filmmaker can cast someone who's close to the character that you are trying to have them portray, it's going to make things a lot easier because at the end of the day, you don't want them to act. You want them to be. You want honesty out of those performances. And if they can be themselves and just come up with lines or read lines that you've written for them, all the better. And that's how fast, that's how we were able to do what we did on This Is Make so fast is we, you know, Jill actually wrote the screenplay or wrote the scriptment around her friends and she talked to her friends before she wrote the scenes and she knows like i know this person and i'm going to write the scene based on her or based on him on their characters on their their people and then you know like i know i can get this performance out of carlos or deborah or joe or krista and 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 that's how we wrote the scenes out and we kind of found things on the day and it's so freeing it's so exciting and so fun because you really don't know what's going to happen as a director as a filmmaker and 
a lot of times I was just there trying to capture the lightning in the bottle. That was my job, was there to just capture the lightning that was coming off in front of that lens. It's my job to capture it and then to mold it when I get into the editing room. But that is the power of a scriptment. And it, it, it's something that I think a lot of filmmakers, you know, the screenplay, at least for me, was always this big monstrous thing that had to be perfect and had to be read perfectly. And, you know, if the, the formatting wasn't right or the, the way you said things wasn't right or this or that, it just created so many obstacles from actually going out and making your movie that I think that this scriptment is a way to loosen those shackles, if not shake those shackles completely off, where you could, in theory, grab a thousand bucks and go make a movie. You know, grab a camera, grab some lights, maybe, even lights, maybe no lights, grab some audio, get some friends together, make a movie. This is what Mark Duplass did. This is what Joe Swansburg did. This is what Lynn Shelton did. You know, these guys all did that, and they kind of just ran with it. And they made some really fun, heartfelt movies by doing so. And I don't think it's something that you guys can't do yourselves. Now, it also depends on the kind of story you're trying to tell, guys. If you're trying to tell a story that's super action-packed, big thing, you know, big action sequences and all that kind of stuff, this this process might not work for you. This is this process will work, you know. Though I am I'm interested to one day try this formula on an action movie or on a um a horror movie. I'm really curious to see, and I might do that in the future just to see what happens. <laughs> uh, you know, and it has been done to the horror genre uh, as well. So, you know, well, obviously the biggest example of that was um, Blair Witch. Uh, the Blair Witch Project was done. They did that. There was literally no script. They just kind of were guided along and the actors kind of made everything up as they went along. So it can, it can work in those genres as well. Um, but if you have a lot of big science, you know, big science fiction or big visual effects and things like that, you really have to plan certain things out. But there's no reason why some of the dialogue in those scenes cannot kind of riff like this. But again, you have to keep that budget low. And you know, I, I kept I kept the budget uh, under 25 million, like I say all the time, uh, for this is Meg, uh, and kept it in a, in a budget range that I felt very comfortable with uh, by doing this kind of this kind of work. But I know that Mark Duplass and those kind of guys, they'll work with, you know, under a million dollar budget, uh, sometimes a little bit over a million dollar budget. You know, I know uh, Drinking Buddies, uh, the movie with uh, Olivia Wilde, Jake London, uh, and Anna Kendrick by Joe Swansburg. They, um, that movie budget was about $550,000, something like that. It was his biggest movie ever, budget wise. Uh, and that movie was completely done by this way. It's just that was his. That's that's Joe's process. That's how he likes to to work. And I understand. I once I did it with this as Meg. It's so fun, so freeing, and the actors get to really have fun with the characters and create the characters on the fly. And by just being able to loosen things up a little bit, it works so wonderfully. And again, this is not for everybody. But I think for a majority of you guys out there, for at least a portion of you guys listening to this, this might be a way for you to get off the, the ground, to get your first feature made. You know, you do very low risk. Again, thousand bucks. You know, if you guys can't raise a thousand bucks by asking your parents and friends, you're in deep trouble, my friends. So you got to at least raise a grand, let's say. Get somebody who owns a camera or, or shoot it with your iPhone, for God's sakes. Um, do something like that. Make sure your sound is good. Make sure your visuals are, are, are decent and go tell your story. Make a movie. There's very little risk involved there. When you start getting into the 50, the 100,000, the 200,000, the million dollars, you guys better know what the hell you're doing. <laughs> you know, before, before you get going, you better have a distribution plan and all that kind of stuff. But at this level, at that low budget, um, under $10,000, you can, you can have some fun and experiment. So if you don't feel comfortable doing with a feature film right away, do it with a short. You know, take take 50 bucks, take 100 bucks and go make a few shorts like this. Get your get your feet wet and see how it works. Do a few scenes, do a few 5-minute short films like this. Um again, keep the budgets really low, 100 bucks. You know, no more because if you start doing like 2, 3, 400, 500 bucks, well shit, then you could go make a feature at that point. <laughs> but uh anyway, th- th- I just hope that this um, this podcast kind of helps you guys understand that there is another option out there for you and there is another path to make your first feature film that you don't have to 
go the traditional route of getting a screenplay, getting it developed, going through all of the the, the rigmaroles, submitting this to a, to actors and so on. And again, at the beginning, guys, I know I know a lot of people are going to have this question, like, well, Alex, if I have a scriptman and I've never done anything, can I approach name talent? Uh, I'm going to probably say no, uh, unless you have a relationship with that name talent or or some somebody like that. It's going to be very difficult. We were lucky that Jill had very, you know, you know, they're her friends. And they were able to reach out to her friends and and we were able to do this in this fashion because they trusted her and they trusted me. But when you're starting out, don't don't worry about getting actor like big name actors. If you can, great. It all helps, you know, even if it's, you know, TV actors or people that we recognize or just good solid uh performers, great. But don't get caught up in that. That's another obstacle. Again, you go look at Mark Duplass, go look at Joe Swansburg, go look at Lynn Shelton. All of those movies, when they first started out, did not have names in them. They just wanted to tell a good story with their friends or people that they knew who could act and so on. So that's what I would recommend for you guys to do as well, is to go in, get a bunch of your friends or actors that you can find uh, to go out and have some fun with. And that's a big key point, guys. Have fun. This should not be stressful. There should not be be anger and, and hijinks and uh, drama and all this kind of stuff. It should be fun, guys. If not, you'd go out and get real jobs. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know it's hard work, and I know it's, it's sometimes it's stressful, and I know it, it can be a little bit overbearing uh, sometimes making uh, making movies and being an artist in this sense. But at the end of the day, man, you have to have fun, and if you don't have fun, that shows up on the screen. And when you guys finally see This Is Meg... I hope you can sense the fun we had. We had no drama at all ever on the set. We we it, everything flowed so beautifully, so wonderfully all the way through the editing to the final part to the final uh you know cut of the movie and the final color and the mix and everything. It all just worked so beautifully and I've never I've never experienced an artistic ex- uh, uh, endeavor like that in my entire career. And I was like, wow, because I completely loosened the shackles. I completely just said, fuck it. I'm just going to go out and do this. I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to think about, oh, I got to do this or I got to do that. And this is the way I have to do. I finally, after 20 odd years, decided, you know what? I'm not going to listen to what everybody else is doing and and do it. I'm going to do it my way. And for me, it's working, you know, and I did, again, I did did Meg at, at, at at a budget that I can feel very comfortable with that I can continue to do those kind of movies indefinitely if I have to. You know, Joe Swansburg made has made like 32 feature films. You know, one year he made six feature films. You know, I'm going to put in the show notes uh, my links to both Mark Duplass and uh, Joe Swansburg's uh, keynote addresses uh, at South by Southwest and, you know, backgrounds on both those guys because if you want to study, you know, people, uh, the, the process, these guys are, are definitely... Uh, two guys that you should definitely look look for or look at and, and study their processes. Uh, and again, of course, the show notes are at uh, IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash 120. But, uh, but again, Joe, Joe was one of those guys that just kind of decided to keep making movies. He's like, well, if no one's going to pay attention to me, at least I'm going to be prolific. And that was such a great way of looking at it. He's like, I'm just going to keep making movies. And he'd made one year, he made six feature films. He made it with his, you know, I, think, I don't know if it wasn't VHS, but it was mini DV cameras. You know, he just went on shot with a bunch of friends. No stars, no faces, no marquee value. He just said, hey, I'm going to go make some indie movies. And he did, and he sold them. He didn't sell them for a lot, but he sold them. And he was able to make, that year he said he was able to make fifty or $60,000 by selling six movies, uh, you know, uh, at, at, and, and having some other movie money come in. In that keynote address, he really talks uh, talks a lot about the financials of how he was able to make it. And it's so wonderful to hear. It's very honest and tells you exactly what you want to hear. So definitely check that out at indiefilmhustle.com forward slash 120 to, uh, in the show notes for his his keynote speech because it's it's really amazing. But back to scriptments. Again, I just want to give you guys the tools to feel free to make your movies. No matter where you are in the world, I want you to be able to feel free to make these kind of movies and just go out and make them. And then from there, that grows to the next level and the next level and the next level. And one last thing before I go, guys. I want you to just, please, and I've said this before in the podcast, but I'm going to continue to repeat this until people understand it. 
you can't expect every movie that you make to be the home run, to be that one lottery ticket win that you're looking for. When you put that kind of pressure on the movie, it won't succeed. You will be you will fail many times and you are setting yourself up for failure. With This Is Meg, I am putting it out into the universe. I'm putting it out into the world. And whatever happens, happens. People will love it. People will hate it. I know that for a fact that people will love it and people will hate it. Uh, that's it. And there'll be some people in the middle and there'll be people in the extremes. And that's just the way it is. That's just the way it happens with all art. So you have to prepare yourself for that. But am I expecting it to get, you know, to get into Sundance and, and win me uh, the lottery ticket? No, because you know what? I didn't get into Sundance. And it wasn't the end of the world because I was, ex- you know, I was like, hey, if I get in, great. If I don't, let's go on. You know, so you always go for, you always aim for the fences, but understand that don't put the pressure that if, if it doesn't, your whole world is over and you can't make anymore. I want you not to feel that way. I want you to feel like I'm going to make five feature films and I'm just going to keep going no matter what. And you make them at a low enough budget that you could keep going. You could have a day job and save yourself up a thousand bucks, find yourself somebody with a camera or, or shoot it with your own iPhone and you make your movies. And that's how you do it. You just keep going. But the thing is that if if you're going to go, and I'm going to use baseball as an analogy because it's a great analogy, but if you're going to go up to the plate, a lot of filmmakers will go up to the plate for the very first time and they expect to hit a home run when they've never taken a swing. That's what happens with most filmmakers. Most fam- filmmakers have not been shooting commercials or music videos or short films or anything for a long period of time where they have gotten a lot of swings at bat. You know, I've gotten a tremendous amount of swings at bat, but I've never won- I've never done one with a feature, but I've done a lot of other shooting in my career. So I feel comfortable up there at the plate. You've got to feel comfortable up there at the plate. So Robert Rodriguez, before he made Mariachi, he shot like 20 or 30 short films. He'd do it every weekend. And he didn't show those films to anybody, to no one. He was just doing them to practice because he's kept going up there and swinging away. Swinging away. Sometimes he hit. Maybe he made a single. Maybe he he foul out. <laughs> if you guys don't know about baseball, got to look up the rules. But anyway, um, but that's what he did, and that's what I plan to continue doing with my features, because I think what you need to do is you got to focus on those singles, those doubles, possibly some triples, instead of going for the home run every time. Because if you focus on those singles, so let's say you know, let's say uh, you make a movie and that movie. You know, you made for a thousand bucks and you sell it for four thousand bucks you make on it. Well, you made four times your money. Well, hell, that's a success for me. It might not be the game winning home run, but damn, you made money as a filmmaker. You're you're the top one percent of filmmakers if you're able to do that. So what do you do next? You make another movie for maybe two thousand dollars this time. If it was me, I'd make I'd make another movie for a thousand bucks. So that's just me. Um, but you make another movie for two thousand bucks this time. And let's say you go out there and you make another 4000 bucks. You doubled your money. And you move on. And you make another movie for 2000 bucks. And that other movie makes 10000 bucks. And all of a sudden, somebody's looking at you. Some people are like, hey, this guy's making movies. This girl's making movies. How much do you need for your next movie? And you go, well, I, I, you know, I feel comfortable now. I need about six or $7,000 to make the next movie. Or I'll make, I want 10000 bucks for the next movie. Okay, great. Now, mind you, you're working other jobs to make a living and all this stuff, but you're making art and you're making, you're building up a business and it takes time to do that. So I want you guys to focus on the long game. And I've said this a million times, focus on the long game. And a scriptment can do that for you. It can help you get that movie made very quickly where you could, in theory, make a movie, two movies in a year once you get the ball rolling. Next year, I'm going to announce it this, I'm going to announce it today. I'm already in prep for my next movie. Um, I'll announce it after the new year sometimes. I don't know. I'm working on this on the scriptment as we speak. And uh, and I already have a second one I'm working on as well. So my goal next year is to shoot one feature and at least begin either shooting or in pre-production on the second one and see how see if I can do two in one year. That would be ideal for me next year. Um Without anything happening with This Is Meg, you see, you notice I'm not even paying attention with, to This Is Meg. You know, This Is Meg is going to do what she does, but I'm not putting any pressure on her. I'm moving, I'm moving along with or without her. 
without anything that she happens to bring, if she gets sold for a million bucks or for five grand or, you know, it gets a manager or it gets a producer to come in and give me money for another movie, I'm not counting on any of that. I'm only counting on what I can control. And what I can control is going off and making another movie and and getting ready to make a third movie and so on. And that's the mentality that I think filmmakers starting out who want to tell their stories, who want to make a living doing this, have to do. And I I hope this podcast uh, brought some light into your into your darkness. No, uh, brought some light to the subject and 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 shows you and 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 kind of informs you that there is another way. There is another way to go make a movie. There is another way to get your feature filmmaking career started and, and, and going off. And by the way, this can work for series too. If you want to make a little pilot and like a bunch of like, you know, a webisodes, uh, you know, web series, um, or, you know, you want to create a pilot to pitch to Netflix or to Hulu or to Amazon or Crackle or one of these guys, this process works wonderfully. Because if you're able to create, and this is what Mark Duplis, I'm going to go back to Mark, my man Mark. He was able to pitch Togetherness, an HBO show, and ran two seasons on HBO based on this premise. This is how he worked on that show. I don't know if he did a pilot or anything like that beforehand, but uh, but this is how he did the show. And, and it was wonderful because it was very low cost. And you know what studios love? Low cost, high quality. They love that. And if you can get something out to a point where you can do that, you're going to work. You're always going to work, guys. So just keep that in mind. So it can translate to a lot of things, but... We're focusing on feature films right now, um, but that's. I hope this helps you guys. I really do, because I, I, you know, I, I think sometimes I've had to go through all this pain in my career to be able to share this this information with you guys. And I hope that I can continue not going through pain. <laughs> Hopefully, we. I hope I don't go through too much more. But you know what? At the end of the day, guys, honestly, your failures and your pain is who makes you what makes you a better person and what makes you a more informed person. It makes you who you, who you are. So all these years of struggle and, and everything that I've gone through, um, I'm hoping that my journey can be a beacon of, of, of light for you guys, at least a beacon of information, to at least share it with you what I'm doing. And hopefully it can translate and help even one of you guys out there. It's worth it. I know that sounds really um, cliche, but <laughs> but that's that's I think it, it makes sense. So Thank you for listening to my ramblings this week, guys. I hope it was helpful to you. And uh, we will continue doing more Ask Alex episodes in the future. You guys keep sending me tons of questions. So I had no idea uh, that this was going to be such a big deal. Uh, so uh, and, and I'm, I'm glad I'm helping you guys out. I'm glad you like the episodes. And uh, and please keep sending your, uh, your suggestions uh, for questions at ifhsubmissions at gmail.com. And also, guys, don't forget, the show is also sponsored by Masterclass. And you got to head out to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash Masterclass to uh, get access to Werner Herzog's Masterclass, the Oscar-winning uh, director, uh, as well as Aaron Sorkin's screenwriting Masterclass, which is honestly remarkable. I, I, I'm, again, taking it again since I'm going through my, um, my process right now, my scriptment for my next project as well as now the new Hans Zimmer uh, Film Score Masterclass is up. Uh, and as, as far as also acting, the Kevin Spacey Masterclass and the Dustin Hoffman Masterclass, learning their techniques. Uh, they're on my list of things to watch. I've actually purchased them already because I want to I wanna see what Dustin and Kevin have to say about acting. I mean, it's invaluable, these courses. So head over to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash Masterclass. So as always, keep that hustle going, keep that dream alive, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com. 